I am so glad you're here for the second episode of Mechanism Monday. In last week's video, which you can view here, I gave you the following problem to solve for today's video. If you haven't had a chance, pause the video, try this mechanism independently, and then resume the video to check your answers. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to give you another mechanism question to solve for next week. The first step in this mechanism is going to be electrophilic attack to form a bromonium ion. Between these alkynes, there are plenty of positions with which we can get electron flow between these two molecules. Specifically, this bromine can attach at this carbon, and then the subsequent flow of electrons can go back to the bromine atom. This is going to kick off these electrons, which were formerly a covalent bond between bromine, to leave behind bromide. And this is going to generate our bromonium ion. So we can draw the bromonium ion now as a bromo bromine with a three-membered ring, and then we still have another pi bond between these two carbon atoms. Importantly, this is going to leave this position at the bromine positively charged. The formal charge is going to be positive at that bromine position, which is why we call it a bromonium ion. From here, our water molecule can come in and attack using the lone pair of electrons on water at this position, which will kick off these electrons and leaving behind a single bond to bromine. Following this nucleophilic attack, the product that we'll be left with contains a OH3 ion at this position, and now this is going to be positively charged, conserving our charges, and then we'll be left with the bromine atom at this position. From here, we can get a proton transfer to occur between another water molecule, which will come and abstract one of these protons making our OH group neutral. And in doing so, that is going to generate a brand new molecule, which is an enol. So an enol, remember, is an alcohol that is attached to an alkene. And now we have this structure. And importantly, in this step, we generated H3O+. So because we generated H3O+, now we have a situation where we can undergo another proton transfer. Specifically, if these lone pairs of electrons on OH come down, this will make the alkene come and grab one of the protons from our hydronium ion to remake water and leaving us with a new molecule which is almost at our final step. From here, all we need to remember is that since this is going to be positively charged with a new carbon to oxygen double bond, this is going to allow for the water molecule, which we regenerated at this position, to come in and do a proton transfer at the final step to give us our final product. And just for completeness, remember that that water molecule can come and abstract that hydrogen from here, giving us our neutral oxygen. Now importantly, even if you've never seen this exact mechanism before, if you just remember that at each position we're following the electrostatic attractions between partially positive or fully positive molecules or ions, and partially negative or fully negative molecules or ions, all we're doing is following that trend and understanding reactivity that you would have learned about in sophomore level organic chemistry. Come back next Monday as we solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. I would love to hear your answers as a comment down below or a video of your own. So make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss another mechanism. I'll see you in the next video.